We have something that's more special than anything that any school can offer. And it's that building over there, the pit. Hello Lobo fans and welcome into a mile high and 37 feet below. Presented by Bud Light, I'm your host Robert Portnoy with the brand new head coach for men's basketball at the University of New Mexico, Richard Patino. Coach Patino, it's great to be with you on the legendary pit floor. Uh, let me start with that. Welcome to Albuquerque, welcome to UNM. But uh, as a coach, you know the history of this building. What's your feeling when you, you sit on this court with me today? Chills, yeah, I mean just uh... I was called when I took the job um, by a coach who's been in the Big Ten and he said it would be the best home court advantage in the Big Ten and the Big Ten is known to have good venues. Um, so chills, you know, I mean, I, I've had a special moment in my life being in this building. My father beat West Virginia in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four in this building. So great memories. I've never been a part of a loss yet. So, uh, uh, but I'm excited. I mean, it's just, uh, there's certain buildings that you've been in that you know there's been great basketball played and uh, you know it's the number one thing that we have to cherish in this program and, and continue to just make it so difficult to play in. Well we want to give you a chance to get to know Coach Patino a little bit today and uh, so that's sort of what we're going to do here. Um, we want to kind of find out what makes you tick. Um, first of all, you know, tell us about your family. Um, uh, obviously your wife Jill and, and you have three beautiful children. Yeah, I mean, that, that is what makes me tick. I, I said during my press conference that I wake up every day and I care deeply about being a great person. I care deeply about being a great husband, being a great father, and then a great basketball coach. Um, you know, I've said to my wife many times, uh, I'm gonna lose some in basketball, but I will never lose in those other categories. They mean too much to me. So uh, my wife, Jill, we met um, actually when my my father was a head coach of the Celtics, um, and she was a freshman going into college at Boston College, and I was in high school, so I got an older woman. I always remind her of that. Um, and then three beautiful kids that are, that are my pride and joy. Um, Ava's nine. She was born in um, Gainesville when I was assistant coach at the University of Florida. She's bounced around a little bit. Um, and then Jack uh, is six, and Zoe is four, both born in Minnesota. So uh, they're going to be a huge part of it. And, um, you know, we're going to create a family environment. Um, but we want, I, the, the most important thing for me that I think Lobo fans need to know is I'm not going to sell them much. That's not what I do. I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to be real. I want them to get to know me, the good, the bad, and everything, uh, and feel a part of it and feel a part of our family. We talked a little bit about the nomadic piece of the coaching lifestyle before we started. Um, your family has to be pretty adaptable, don't they? You got to be ready to go. Uh, you know, fortunately for me, I, I think when we decided to make the move here to New Mexico, Ava was really the one I was worried about. You know, my wife's a trooper. She's made moves to Pittsburgh, Gainesville, Louisville, Miami, Minnesota, and now here. Uh, but Ava, was the nine-year-old, was the one we were concerned with, and we told her about it. She was so excited, um, you know, and she started Googling things and stuff. So um, it's part of the job, you know, but the one thing that I could tell Lobo fans is, we get ingrained in the community and we want to be a part of it and uh, you know we want to be a part of every little thing about it so uh, you're going to see us around uh, you're going to see my kids everywhere running all over the place and you're going to see our my wife out and about we, we try to get involved as many things whether it's children's hospital or uh, coaches versus cancer something that I, I got involved with at the university of minnesota that i was proud of so it is part of the profession but you know we're ready to lay down some roots here in new mexico Coach Patino obviously grew up in a legendary coach's family. Um, your family, I'm sure, exposed a lot to basketball, but what are some of the kids' other interests? What are the things that they like to do? Yeah, for my kids, um, you know, in, in Minnesota, you know, hockey's big, right? And so they get a lot of pressure from that hockey. None of them took it up. They all wanted basketball, which is great because it's too cold in those rinks anyway. All my friends are taking their kids and they're freezing their butts off. I'm like, no, I'm, we're playing basketball. So Jack was basketball. Jack was um, baseball, soccer, doing a little bit of everything. Um, Ava's really big on, on basketball and swim would probably be the two. Uh, so they got the bug, which is really cool. You know, I mean, it's, it's fun to see. He's always a little too young for it. Uh, but they're going to be around, and uh, they're going to be shooting around as much as possible. But right now, it's, it's, it's basketball for both of them. So I'm excited to get them involved in the local stuff. That's awesome. Did that just kind of happen organically because they were around it so much? 
Yeah, I'm not a big pressure the kid. I want them to be happy, you know, and my, my dad with me was the same way. I mean, do whatever you want, just be happy. And so there's not gonna be a whole lot of pressure from home. Now there'll be pressure on, you know, you, you be respectful and you make sure you treat your teachers with respect and you pay attention and do all those things and you do well, but uh, we wanted to let them kind of figure it out on their own. And um, they both seem, Jack really is gravitating towards it in a big way. You mentioned your father let you make your choices and you said that your kids got the bug. When did you get the bug? I would say um, I played basketball growing up. I was an average player. You know, the greatest piece of advice when I got into coaching was, uh, you know, a coach said to me, don't ever let them see you shoot because they won't respect you anymore. <laughs> and so they'll never see me play. Um, but no, I was, I was a solid high school player. You know, maybe could have played D3, but just decided that, um, I got an opportunity going into college. I decided to go to Providence College. And I was told by, a, I met a friend who said, hey, why don't you be my assistant coach? I said, okay, and it was outside of Providence, Rhode Island, about 20 minutes outside. So I got the bug then because I became a coach and we were a really good team. Not a whole lot to do with me, but I was just a voluntary assistant coach. But I got it then, just being on the court, working with these guys, um, helping build a team, helping them. We had some scholarship guys who went on to play major division one basketball and just being a little part of that process. That's where it started. And it's uh, the rest is history. Are you a Boston area sports guy yourself? Remarkably, no, I'm a New York sports guy. So growing up, you know, you always are fans of, um, you know, where your, your parents are from. So I'm a Yankee fan. Um, I'm a New York Giants fan. The amazing thing was my wife was a huge Red Sox fan and I converted her into a Yankees fan. Uh, so that was the amazing thing because when I went to high school in Boston and college, I, mean, I remember being in college, at Providence College, and I lived in a house of nine guys, and eight were diehard Red Sox fans. And Aaron Boone hit that home run, and I'm the only Yankee fan in there in a college house. I had to kind of go for a walk to get away from them because they were looking for me. So converted my wife to a Yankee fan. Um, Obviously, you know, the, the, the interest isn't as big anymore in that you have kids, but I've always been a New York sports fan. Okay, what about the kids? What kind of fans are they? Well, they were obviously Minnesota fans. I mean, I've, I've uh, you know, they were rooting for the local sports teams, but, you know, it's, uh, they'll be Lobo fans, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, they're down for watching any game. Um, we went to a couple crazy. I mean, I had a good friend who played on the Minnesota Wild, went to some hockey games, you know. Um, but they'll be, they'll be all about all Lobo sports coming down here. Awesome. All right, that'll bring a wrap to uh, our first episode of A Mile High and 37 Feet Below, presented by Bud Light with new Lobo men's basketball coach Richard Patino. Our next episode, we look at his vision for Lobo basketball.